Hi, welcome back to Shawnee Hills Workshop. If you want to learn how to build a sturdy workbench that will last a lifetime for around $100, this is the video for you. Now I've got sitting in front of me $101.76 worth of material. This is 25 2x4s and two 4x4s. Now I spent a little bit more because I didn't want to go with just standard studs. I wanted to get top choice. Uh, it has um, no waning, a lot less knots. They're just a lot straighter in general, a lot better lumber. But that's not necessary. If you want to take the time to pick through the cheaper studs, you can save yourself a few dollars. Now I've already got all the hardware and glue I need, so if you're doing this project yourself and you don't have those things, you also need to take that into consideration. So I'm going to start off with eight of the two befores and five clamps. Now if you don't have any clamps, there are several other ways you can do this. There's a wedge method where you screw one wedge down to the table and take another wedge and drive it in. There's a bolt method. I think uh, it was Wrangler Star that just put out a video recently using all thread and nuts. I'll put a link to that video. So there's multiple ways. I have clamps, so I'm going to use them. It makes the job a whole lot easier. And if you're building a workbench, you should probably have some clamps anyway, so it's not a bad idea to go get some. We're going to start off by putting all the two befores in the clamps, kind of lay them out, and figure out what orientation we want them in. I've got the boards laid out how I think that they'll go the best, and now I'm just going to start adding glue and then clamp them up. All right, the first slab's all glued up. We're gonna let that set for probably an hour or two before I take it out of the clamps, and then we'll glue up the other one. Once the glue dries on the first slab, grab eight more two-by-fours and do the whole process over again. So now that we have both halves of the top glued up, I'm gonna run them both to the planer, get them nice and smooth on the top and bottom, and then we'll glue them together. Now that both the pieces of the top are planed down and nice and square, we're gonna lay the clamps down and glue those two pieces together. So the top's all dried up now. This was a really great project to work on yesterday while I was working out remodeling the garage. I could come in, start a glue up, get it in the clamps, and then go back to working in the garage. And so, now that we got all, everything glued up, I'm going to take the belt sander, clean this glue seam up a little bit. The actual slabs themselves came out pretty stinking flat. Uh, just a little bit of work needs to be done, maybe you know, a couple passes with the belt sander is all. Then we're gonna trim the ends and get ready to start building the base. Using a stop block at the miter saw, I cut four legs to 33 inches. For me, that gives me a 36 inch tall bench. And that is a comfortable height, I'm 5'10". If you're a little taller, you might want a little taller. If you're a little shorter, you might want it a little bit shorter. So I've been playing around with different spacing of the legs. Now you've got a lot of things to take into consideration. The narrower you make your stance, the less stable your bench is gonna be. But the wider you make your stance, the less room you're gonna have clamping a four on the edge. Now, to combat that, I'm not planning on putting a front stretcher uh, from my legs at the top, just at the middle for the shelf. At the back, I'll have one at the top and at the bottom. So, right now, I think I've got my leg spacing figured out. The next step is to put dados in the legs to accept the uh, cross members, the stretchers, and we're gonna do that at the table saw. I'll mark all four legs for the bottom stretcher, but only two of them for the top stretcher. After I cut the dados into the legs, I went ahead and cut my three stretchers 
to 86 and a quarter. I came up with this length basically by setting the legs on the bottom side of the table and just looking what looked visually pleasing to me. There was no rhyme or reason beyond that. So I've got these all cut to the same length and I'm gonna start out with the back stretcher assembly. And for the long stretchers, I'm actually gonna glue these and screw them. But for the short stretchers that connect the back legs to the rear legs, I'm only gonna screw those in case I ever need to move. I can flat pack this bench and take it with me. Before I put the legs together, I'm going to mark for center and put adjustable feet in the legs. I've got all my side stretchers cut to length. I've got it clamped together with the top stretchers holding everything in place and I've taken my middle stretchers and cut them down three quarters of an inch thinner than what I did the front and rear stretcher. Now when I install them, I'll install them flush with the bottom of the stretcher and this will give me a recess to put a shelf in. Now again, we're not going to glue these, we're just going to screw them so we can move them in the future. To join the top side stretchers to the legs and to the top itself, I'm going to use pocket hole joinery and this is a perfect example of why I love the Armor Auto Jig. I don't even know what thickness this is. I've planed it down from a 2x4, but I don't have to know. I put it in, adjust it and lock it down and it's automatically to the right thickness. There is no thought process on my side, no measuring. It just works every time. I'll put a link in the description. I also put a card up in the... Uh, Let's try this corner and to a video review I did on the Armor Auto Jig. <laughs> that looks very nice. Can they look? Well, here it is. I've been living with this workbench for a few weeks now, and I've absolutely loved it. As you can see, I've already started moving things onto it. It's already got a lot of battle scars. I've been using it and putting it through its paces. Now, I still need to bolt the vise down. I'm 98% sure that's where I want the vise to be. Currently, it's extending out from the front to where I can clamp something in it, and it won't interfere with the top but I can't rotate it 90 degrees and have clearance on the side. I just don't feel comfortable taking it that far to the side. So I'm pretty sure that's where I'm gonna put it at. 
I've uh, built a lower shelf here and an upper shelf, as well as a whole lot of other organization that you'll be seeing in the next video. And like I said, I'm just, I'm happy with it. It's served every purpose. Now, all the lawnmowers will be in this bay and all the other power equipment is there. I'll have my vise, my workbench. I can easily roll my mechanics cart over here and work on anything that needs to be worked on. So I would say that this wall and this workbench is a successful project. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not already, hit that subscribe button. If you don't like this video, click the thumb downs button, but tell me why. You know, if there's something that you think I could do better, let me know, I'm always trying to get better. I'll put links in the description to my Facebook page, Instagram page, and Patreon page. Thanks for watching Shawnee Hills Workshop. We'll see you next time.